Hi, good morning, and welcome back to the Krista Namdahl Show. This is episode 1042, and we are back live in Southwest Florida at the beach. If you're joining me live, please say hello. Let me know if you're crafting today. Let me know if you have questions for me. We're going to talk about a variety of things today, and eventually we'll get to yarn too. Uh, but I definitely have a great Amazon find to show you if you are in the market for a different type of a bathing suit for this summer. Uh, let's see. Hi, Judy, Steffi, Grace, Leona, Kimberly, Val, Steffi, good morning. Welcome back. Hi, Judy. Hope everybody's having a great day so far. Hi, Angela and Judy. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Lily and Karen, Marsha, good morning. Hi, Thea. Thank you, Angela. Hi, Judy. Hi, Geraldine. Oh, a quick, uh, quick mention to my Patreon subscribers to let you know that you have gotten your, uh, all your goodies have been sent to you for the month of May already in your message box on Patreon. Hi, Sh hi Sean and Doris, Kathy. Thank you, Karen. Hi, Christine. I think I missed some names. Hi, Thea and Helen, Geraldine. Okay, I think I'm caught up now. Hi, Marsha. Good morning. How's everybody today? Hopefully you're having a great day so far. What is it, Wednesday? Is today Wednesday? Ah, I don't know. Is it Wednesday or Thursday? <laughs> I can't remember. I was going to say Happy Hump Day if it's Wednesday. I think it's Wednesday. Happy Hump Day. I'm a little frazzled because... Uh, I, at the very last minute, uh, Knit and Crochet now has given me two more patterns to do step outs for for the show. And so I have an enormous amount of work to get done this week and it's put all of the rest of my work on hold. So uh, I'm just a little frazzled over it. I've had to run to the store frantically for more yarn because I've run out twice and it's just, I'm really behind on my own schedule because I thought I was done with this. But anyway, so you might be wondering why I'm wearing a bathing suit today. I have been wanting to try out a pinup style bathing suit for a while now because I feel like I just don't have the body and the shape for the bikinis that I've been wearing for the longest time. And it was time for a change. Uh, I'm not gonna lose 50 pounds before summer. And um, my bathing suits are all like really old. They're 10 years old, threadbare. And I thought, and I looked on Amazon for a pinup style because I thought if I'm going to do something different, why not go for something that I truly love and truly love to watch other women do wear in all shapes and sizes. So I thought, what's the harm in trying a pinup style swimsuit? So I found a really cool one for $30 on Amazon. And if you're like me and are looking for something with maybe a little more coverage, but still want to feel sexy, um, I wanted to share this with you. So I'm going to stand up for a minute and don't worry if this offends you, we'll go back to the beach cover up in a few minutes as well. But I wanted to show you it's a, it is pinup style with shearing in the waist here. And then it absolutely full coverage and high waisted, uh, very stretchy. I love the print. This has little leopards on it and roses on a black background with tropical leaves. The top, is actually what I love even more than the bottoms is it's a molded cup. You know how with sports bras and bras in general and bathing suits, not bras, sports bras and bathing suits, they come with those removable pads. They are one of the things that I dislike the most in this entire world. I do not like those removable pads and I prefer something that is a molded cup. This is one piece. It does not have removable cups and it has a little bit of length on it too. The straps are removable and so you can wear it strapless as well. Um, I like the straps but it's nice to know that there is that option and it is very secure so I know that it would be fine without the straps uh, but I just really love the shape. I feel comfortable in my skin. You know I'm almost 50 years old. I'm definitely a little on the heavier side than I normally am and I absolutely feel comfortable in my skin and I have not said that in a bathing suit in a really long time. So my with swimsuit season around the corner I just wanted to share my thoughts on this just in case anyone else is in the same boat as I am and want a different style but don't want to change your look completely. Yeah, I think I look, I think I look thinner in this than I did in my old bathing suits. Like, um, 
the coverage is great. There's a little bit of compression in the bottoms. That's what it said on the description. And I think it does, because I feel like I look better in this than I do in a normal bathing suit. So just wanted to share that with you. Oh, and it's only $30, and it comes in a ton of prints and styles and colors. So I've shared it in my Amazon shop, and I feel like this is really a wonderful find, and I wanted to share it with all of you. So. Having said that, does anybody have any questions about that before we turn move to something else? Uh, yeah, the things that I liked 10, 15 years ago just aren't the things, and that's how old my bathing suits are, um, they just aren't the things that I like anymore. So uh, even though I didn't want to spend the money, um, I like wearing things till they fall apart for some reason, but uh, this seemed, for $30, it just seemed like a worthwhile, experiment and I feel so happy that I did it so just want we're more alike than we are different like I always say and I figured if I was in this transition stage right now with wanting a different style and loving pinup fashion anyway I thought some of you might be interested and interested in seeing it on a real person uh, I know they show the models so thin in the ads for every for most swimsuits so I thought it might be helpful to see it on someone like me five foot nine 180 pounds 38 d yeah right judy i live in florida i should have a nice bathing suit uh i did not make the beach cover-up it is actually a thrifted find that was a hand-me-down it's pretty crazy uh, i am going to make uh, a black beach cover-up to go with it though thank you judy i absolutely love it love it love it so i wanted to share that with all of you so that brings me to the next thing i wanted to talk about uh Okay, got to organize my brain. There are things that I want to tell you about, but I can't yet. Things that I want to tell you about now. Ah, okay. I'm saving something else for Friday. I'll tell you a couple of other things on Friday. Um, I can show you a sneak peek, though. This is a new shawl, new knit shawl pattern that's coming very soon. It is a really cool stitch pattern that a lot of you have probably never used before and it is amazing. And it's one of the stitch patterns that has elongated stitches in it, which means that it doesn't use a lot of yarn. Now I did it in Be So Easy yarn, number five bulky weight yarn, but it is a top-down construction, so you could make it in any weight yarn. The pattern will be available probably, oh shoot, I'm gonna be traveling all next week, so it'll probably be out the following week. But what I wanna talk about with this this morning uh, is beneficial to you right now regardless so what I wanted to share with you about it right now like I said the pattern will be out later and so will the videos and all that good stuff but it's a top-down construction shawl and what happens to a lot of us when we're making a pattern whether we're following the pattern with the same yarn or we're changing yarn or changing different weight there's so many different ways that we substitute yarns when we're doing top-down construction shawls and what's one of the biggest problems that you come up with when you do that. I'll wait and see who wants to guess what's one of the biggest problems you have when you substitute yarn in a pattern and it's top-down construction. I'll see what you guys guess and then I'll tell you what I think is one of the biggest problems and the one that I want to talk about today. <laughs> I did do a video the other day showing you the Pico bind off on this one. As I was doing the Pico bind off, that's where I did that video. So if you wanted to use that stitch pattern on anything, the video is there already. Uh, so I'm going to tell you what I think one of the biggest problems is, and that is running out of yarn before you finish, right? Now, running out of yarn before you finish can, come, can be a problem for all sorts of reasons. It could be because of gauge. It could be because of yarn substitution. It can be because of fiber content or your own personal tension. It, uh, so many different reasons why you can run out of yarn. And this is why I want to talk about it today. What do you do? There's so many different ways that you can change a pattern if you run out of yarn. Let's say, first and foremost, can you get more yarn? If you can, great, just buy another ball of yarn but not always. You can't always buy another ball of yarn. And so what do you do then? And there are some, you can unravel back 
to the to uh, a previous row and then do your bind off or your edging you can unravel a whole repeat so that you have the right multiple for doing your edging you can unravel back to the beginning of the last row and make a color change right you can do a color block i've done that in designs where i called it part of the design element but really in the back of my head it was because i didn't have enough of the original color and so it can absolutely be a design feature to change the color so with this one this one i did not have any more yarn left and i ran out of yarn halfway through the bind off row I didn't have the same color and I didn't even have a color that I thought would coordinate to just do the bind off in a secondary color. So here's something that I think that works, especially when the original color is a thicker yarn. I think it's really fun and interesting to take a thinner yarn and mix and match a couple of colors to try to blend into a similar color. So I didn't do a great job on this, but I did a good enough job and I really didn't want it to be super perfect because I wanted you to see what's happening here. So as you can see on this last row, I'm doing the bind off, doing the bind off, and I run out of yarn right around the middle here. And so I picked a thinner yarn. I happen to have some several colors of pinks in Be So Baby yarn. and. I took white and two pinks and blended them together. What I should have done is taken more of a salmon color and mixed it with the two pinks instead of doing the white. And I think it would have blended better, but I also wanted you to see it so you could see what I'm talking about as well. So I came, like, if I didn't tell you, did any of you notice yet that the color was off at the bottom row? I don't think it's super noticeable unless it's pointed out to you. But as I'm saying this, I'm telling you, if you switch those colors even more, you could blend. And the reason why using a thinner yarn and doing two or three plies is better is because you have more control over the color combinations. Like I said, this came out a little too light pink because I added white. If I would have added salmon with the two medium pinks, it would have blended even so that it would be invisible to me like invisible in person. I think it's, and I think that's just amazing that you guys didn't even see it until I pointed it out. So I'm hoping that that means that you agree with me that that's really a great trick to be able to blend. Like if you have stash at home, this is something you can do without buying yarn. As long as you have stash at home and you can pick some different colors that go with the color family of the original project, nobody will ever know, right? Isn't that great? So like I said, you can unravel back. If you're putting an edging on, you can, uh, in, whether you're putting an edging on or not, you can unravel back one row or unravel back one repeat. You can um, add a secondary color that's a contrast color and make it a design intention. Or if you really want to just keep going and you have a bunch of colors in your stash, you can pick through your stash and blend those colors together to come up with a similar color. And it's kind of like when you're painting, when you're trying to pick a color, you blend colors together. Well, this is the way that you can blend different strands together to create a different color. Yes, I agree, Lily. Handmade things are not meant to be perfect anyway. The, the, it's the, the beauty is in the imperfection, in my opinion, as well. Uh, I totally agree with you on that. And so even if it didn't match, I would have still been happy with it. But I know some people are more interested in the perfection side of things. And that's why I wanted to point out that not only could this be improved upon, but how and why. Does anybody have any questions about that? Because I, I think this is such an interesting subject and something so fun to share with all of you. So if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks, Doris. I hope this is a tip that you can put in your toolbox in your head so that you can use it sometime too. Yay, I'm so glad you guys agree with the imperfection. Thanks, Lily, for bringing it up. Always a good thing to bring up. We craft for fun and for joy, not for perfection. Yeah, blending colors is fun and you could even try in a different couple different ways and do a little swatch and see which one looks the best. I had a lot of fun mixing and matching them. Like I said, I, 
in hindsight and you know I don't have my yarn with me my yarns in my storage unit so I went and grabbed three colors then went back and worked on this in the RV and then I realized I probably needed a, a fourth like corally pink or a salmon pink to replace the white and I just didn't feel like driving back over there that was so it was a little lazy on my part too <laughs> but uh, like I said it's still a great tip and it's still a great uh, a great solution for running out of yarn Ooh. does anybody have any other questions about that Uh, I did want to mention about the schedule next week. I will probably not be doing many videos, if any at all, next week. I have two very intense travel days and filming in um, Indiana. If it makes sense and I can go live from the studio on Tuesday when I'm taping, I will. But I have a 12-hour travel day on Monday and a 12-hour travel day on Wednesday and a full of uh, schedule on taping schedule on Tuesday will probably not go live Thursday morning because I'll be getting home very late Wednesday night as well so I probably won't be back to doing the show until Friday unless I have some time to do something on Tuesday uh, so just wanted to let you know about that there's going to be a live premiere tomorrow at 9 a.m. for part two of the Isabella poncho and shawl pattern and then Friday we'll be live again um, for the show. Okay? So just a heads up on all that. I sh I'll have all of that scheduled uh, later today. I'm planning on taking short videos and then compiling them into a work trip video when I get back. So you will get to see behind the scenes. I'm just not sure if it's going to be in real time or not. And if I can do short lives along the way, I will try. I just... I. You know, I just don't know what's going to be. I, I can't promise anything if I don't know what's happening. That's all. And what's rest, Judy? What is that? I don't know that word. <laughs> oh, that's a whole other subject, Joe. Yes, talking about making your own gradients. And I've done that in videos and in lives and, uh, and in patterns. And you can see that here on my YouTube channel and on my website. Taking three strands and changing the colors uh, in various stages is a beautiful way to do a, a light gradient, a, a gentle transition gradient with three strands of yarn. Yep. Yep. If anybody wants more information about that, I've done a lot about that. All right. So I do want to take you on a little look around the beach this morning, but I think for starters, why don't we close our eyes for 30 seconds? since this is so relaxing and lovely and even better when we're at the beach. So if you feel confident enough trusting me to close your eyes, I promise I'll let you know when I open my eyes back up and 30 seconds has gone by, give or take. All right, so I'm gonna close my eyes now and start counting. Okay, I opened my eyes back up. You can too. It was 30 seconds, give or take. I try to slow down, but who knows? <laughs> anyway, I hope that was relaxing for you. I, it certainly was for me too. I love doing that, and I love sharing it with all of you too. Okay, who wants to take a look at the beach? Let's go close. Whoa. Well, look, I'm sitting by this awesome tree. I love this tree so much. And we've got all, we've got the trees with the shells in them over here. And the water is just crystal clear. I can't do a beach walk yet, Joe. My ankle is still not um, strong enough to walk, to go for a walk. But as soon as my ankle is healed completely, we will definitely go for a beach walk. I just, I still have my ankle wrapped in a brace and I'm still trying to take it easy. 
man is this beautiful we've got look at all the colors it goes from that brilliant like a royal blue out at the horizon and then several shades of teal and turquoise oh my goodness what a beautiful transition of colors here just gorgeous and crystal clear so beautiful yes ankles do take a long time to heal that is true and unfortunately when i first heard it i was still having to lift a lot of heavy weight and move so i know that i damaged it further uh, which is only going to make the healing take that much longer at least i'm not moving anymore yay i'm carrying heavy stuff the big cypress trees oh and you notice how much quieter it is here too it's not that busy here it's season's over we're spoiled now with having the beach to ourselves. And I have a different kind of a quote to share with you today, too. Um, I was sharing a photo this morning on social media of the Majestic Skies Crochet Shawl Pattern and pulling up the photo to share. And it had a little rainbow in it. And it reminded me of so many things because not only is the field where the photos were taken gone, it's been replaced by expensive homes and it was a time when Marlon was little and he was my in-house photographer before I had tripods and you know timers and stuff on phones it was you know a regular photo and seeing the rainbow reminded me of the Maya Angelou quote be a rainbow in someone else's cloud and so I shared that this morning because it's such a special way to think and to remind it's a great reminder first thing in the day to set your intentions for the day and yes you know we're not all at the same level of happiness on all levels every single day right we're not none of us do this we're always doing this and when we're doing this someone else is doing this and we cross paths when we're high and someone's low or we're low and someone's high and so that quote is so powerful to me because if I'm able to be the rainbow in someone else's cloud even for one moment in every given day what a miracle that would be anyway so i wanted to share that with all of you since it's early in the day and it's a wonderful idea for setting your intentions for the rest of the day as well thank you all so much for taking time out of your busy day to spend a few minutes here with me i hope you enjoyed the beach the sunrise the sounds of the waves the beautiful scenery our chat about what to do when you run out of yarn at the end of your last row in a project and even sharing my new bathing suit maybe that's something that would interest you as well because like I always say we're more alike than we are different and when I find things that are fun and exciting I love to share them with you too so tomorrow we'll do a live premiere for Isabella part two Friday will be live for episode 1043 of the Kristen Amdahl show and then next week I'll be taping in Indiana but I will be sharing with you along the way let us make time to create share and inspire today and every day have a wonderful day everybody and I'll see you soon bye bye